In this tutorial, we're going to look at Blender's scale tool and how to use it with precision to easily resize objects or sections of an object, which some say is impossible. Because let's be honest, Blender isn't always straightforward when it comes to solutions, even when it's super easy. And that's why you come across comments like this sometimes. Everywhere I search for IE radius change on a cylinder, it's usually just when the cylinder is placed and you change the initial radius and then an answer leading towards other software. I've yet to see a definitive answer for changing a cylinder radius in three different places after object creation. Well buckle up and keep watching because I'll give you that answer. We'll look at how it works first and then I'll show you where this method might be helpful on a real world example. All right, so let's look at the problem first. When we bring in, let's say a cylinder, shift a mesh cylinder, we get our panel here where we can initially set the size and dimensions of our cylinder with the vertices, the radius, the depth, etc. So let's get rid of this one because I have prepared that already. So I have a cylinder here. And if we look under item in our dimensions, we see that it has a diameter of five meter and a height of 10 meters. So this is all fair and well, and we can always adjust the overall radius or diameter in our dimensions panel here. So we can scale this up here, which is okay. Where it gets a little trickier is if we go into edit mode and have a couple of loop cuts in here and we wanna resize just a loop cut let's say the one in the middle here, to a precise value. Now, if I turn on my dimensions here, I have given it some dimensions with the measure it tool already. So we can see that everything has a radius of two and a half meters right now. And now we want three meters on the center loop cut. Now we could scale it by eye and try to get it to exactly the value that we want. But then if we up the precision a little, we see eyeballing doesn't really cut it. So we want to be able to put a precise value in there. Now scale in Blender is a multiplier, so simply putting in a value doesn't work. So if I were to say I want to take two meters off the five meters, so I would hit S to scale and then minus two, it just multiplies the current dimension by minus two, which basically inverts the whole thing and expands it and doubles up that radius. So this is not what we want. So we have to work with a formula. And the ingredients for that formula are super easy. All we need is S to scale equal to enter Blender's advanced mode. We need the new dimensions that we want. And we need the old dimension that we currently have. And that's all we need. So let's look at how we're going to put that formula in. We're going to hit S to scale. And then we're going to hit equal to enter the advanced mode that allows us to do math operations and let Blender calculate things for us. Now, be aware that when you put in that formula, the viewport is gonna go wild, but you can just ignore that. By the time you finish that formula and hit enter, it's gonna look correct. So we are going to take the new dimension that we want, which is three meters in that case, so three, and we're gonna divide it by the current dimension, which is five. So divide it by five enter and as you can see now here we have a radius of exactly 1.5 meters if i give it some more precision we can see it's precisely 1.5 meters which makes a diameter of three meters and that is precisely what we want we can also do this with multiple loop cuts at the same time as long as they go in the same direction and then we want to have them at the same dimension so let's say we want to have this one and this one both at six meters so we can hit S to scale, and now we gotta make sure that they're not being pulled apart. So we gotta exclude the Z axis in this case. So we hit Shift Z before we enter the advanced mode. That excludes the Z axis, so they only expand. Then equals new dimension six divided by current dimension five. And just like that, we have scaled our loop cuts with precise measurements. And this is independent from the units that you're working with. So if I switch over to millimeters, for example, and get a different cylinder in here, and I'm going to switch over to millimeters on the measure it tools too. So we can see that we have a diameter of 1346 millimeters, which is a pretty random value. But now let's say we want to have those two center loop cuts at exactly 1200 millimeters. 
So let's go into edit mode, alt select and alt shift select those two loop cuts as to scale. And again, we have to exclude the Z axis so they don't get pulled apart or pushed together. So shift Z equals 1200 divided by 1346. And boom, we have a radius of 600 millimeters or diameter of 1200 millimeters precisely. Now this does also work on faces and edges. So if I bring this over here and add a cube. So we know this cube is 2000 millimeters all around. So I could go in and take this face, for example, hit S to scale equals, let's say 3500 divided by 2000. And if I turn on the edge length now, we see that that face is 3500 by 3500 millimeters. And it also works on edges. So I could take one edge and S to scale equals, let's say 4,000 divided by 2,000. We now have a 4,000 millimeter edge. I don't really use this for edges at all because it just expands them proportionally and I don't have any control over it. So in a case like this, I would go under edit and use the mesh tools under edge tools we find set edge length and there i could go 4000 as the target length and now i actually have control over if i want to have it expanded proportionately or just in one direction and keep one edge on a 90 degree angle by switching to clockwise or counterclockwise so this tool gives me a lot more control over it. That's why I don't use the scale tool on edges like that, but it is possible. So before we get into the real world example, I want to point out one more little thing. So, so far, every cylinder that we've worked on has been straight up the Z axis. But of course, that is the optimal example. And sometimes you just have rotated objects. If I rotate this here randomly, and now let's say I want to have the two end loops scaled to 1500 millimeters. So I would again have to exclude the Z axis, but with a rotated cylinder, the Z axis is not the same on a local basis that it is on a global scale. So all we got to do is switch our transform orientation up here from global to local. And now if we hit S to scale and shift Z, you can already see that we're now working on the local axis of that rotated cylinder. So we can still exclude the Z axis and hit equal for 1500 divided by, what was it, 1346. And now we would have, if we just take on the ruler quickly here, snap it to the vertex, we have now 1500 millimeters. So by just switching over to local transform, you can easily keep working on even rotated objects. So let's look at a real world example to see where that might be useful. And when I say real world, I really mean it. I have a dust extractor step reducer here from my workshop, and it's a perfect example. It's a cylinder shape with a bunch of loop cuts that need to be scaled down precisely so that if you were to, let's say 3D print it, that the hose fits on there properly. So let's see how we can model this. So I've taken a caliper to my reducer here and I've got the measurements right here. I made a quick drawing. This is just a 2D, 2D drawing, but these are the measurements that we need. So let's model this with precision. So we know we need a cylinder with a 102 millimeter diameter, which means a radius of 51 millimeters and a depth of 196 millimeters. So let's bring that in. Shift A mesh cylinder. And we're gonna go radius of 51 and a depth of 196 millimeters. And I'm just gonna go into edit mode quickly, hit G, B, grab one down here, constrain the movement to the Z axis and snap it to there so that we have them both on the same plane. So there's multiple methods that we can use to get in our loop cuts here. We could, for example, hit Control R, get a loop cut in and then move it and snap it to the height that we have here. Or another method would be going into face mode and selecting the bottom face and use the inset tool. So we can hit I to inset, O to outset, and the next measurement would be at 153 millimeters, so 153. Next one would be at 133, so I, 133, or again, control R and snap it to what we have. 
So these are just multiple methods that lead you to the same result. Okay, now we need to size everything down. So we're gonna take our handy formula and just do it very, very fast. So we're gonna take the first two and we gotta bring them down to 50 millimeters. And currently we have 102. So S to scale, shift Z to exclude the Z axis equals 50 divided by 102. Then we need the next two at 63. S to scale, shift Z equals 63 divided by 102. The next two, 76 millimeters. S to scale, shift Z equals 76 divided by 102. And there you have it. Just like that, we have precisely scaled down those loop cuts to the measurements that we need. And of course, now we can double check it and grab three vertices and hit arc. And then we see we have a radius of 38 millimeters, which gives us 76 millimeters diameter. Up here we have 31.5 millimeters. Yeah, that makes 63. And on top we have 25 millimeters, which gives us precisely our 50 millimeters. That's how easy it is to use the scale tool with precision. So now to finish this off, we could go quickly go into face mode and take this face and this face and delete those faces. Only the faces. Go into object mode. Then we can go under modifiers, add a generate solidify modifier. We need a 3.2 millimeter thickness. Make sure we have even thickness toggled because we have uneven surface. And then we could apply that. And then we have a perfect mesh with 3.2 millimeters. And you could print this and have another one of these. So clearly, although it is a multiplier, we can indeed use the scale tool with precision by using the right formula and Blender's advanced mode. Of course, scale is not the only tool that we can be precise with. There is, for example, also the inset faces and extrude region tool. And in this video right here, I'm going to show you all the options those tools come with and how to use them precisely. Thank you for watching.